All right, good afternoon. Welcome to Tech Tuesday. We're thrilled that you're joining us today to hear from two very special guests from BJC. We will be introducing our guests in just a minute. But first, though, we have several people from special school district joining us, and I'd like for them to introduce themselves. So we'll go ahead and start with Ms. Bengali. Hi, my name is Heidi Bengali, and I'm a technology specialist instructor in the tech ed division. So I work at both North and South Technical High Schools. Ms. Harrell. Hi, I'm Angie Harrell, and I'm a health sciences instructor at South Technical High School. I work with the um, Pre-Professional Health Sciences Academy, uh, which is a partnership with Parkway, BJC School Outreach, um, Barnes Jewish West County, and St. Luke's Hospital. Okay, Mr. Hines. Hey, good afternoon, Clarence Hines, and I am the uh, law enforcement instructor at North Technical High School, and I teach juniors and seniors law enforcement one and law enforcement two. Okay, Mr. Chandler. I'm uh, Jeff Chandler. I am the uh, career counselor and business partnership liaison at South Technical High School. Uh, I've been with Special School District for 17 years now. So, <laughs> welcome. Thank, thank you. Mr. Andert. Hi, uh, Kevin Andert. I'm the executive director of career and technical education for Special School District, and just so excited that everybody can be here today. And I am Sally Defani, administrator of partnerships for Special School District. Um, I want to share that our Tech Tuesday sessions will take place every Tuesday at two o'clock. We've lined up many different partners from education, business, and industry as a way to share information with you um, as you plan for your life after high school. And you can find more information about our Tech Tuesdays, including the schedule on the North and South Tech websites. So now I think we're ready to introduce our guests. Um, Ms. Harrell and Mr. Hines, would you like to introduce them? Sure. Uh, so I have the pleasure of introducing Ms. Jennifer Irvin, um, and she is a health community, uh, I'm sorry, school community health education partner with BJC School Outreach. And Ms. Irvin has been instrumental in connecting students from both North and South Technical um, into many different uh, shadowing opportunities within the BJC healthcare system. Um, she has been uh, very helpful in guiding students um, into many different pathways, um, even exposing students to health careers that they wouldn't have even thought of. Um, so we appreciate everything that you've done for us, uh, Jennifer. Thank you. Mr. Hines. Yeah, so good, good afternoon again, everyone. And I have the privilege of introducing uh, my dear friend, uh, Dorian. Um, and he has been uh, really an incredible partner um, for our program specifically um, for about the last three years. And uh, what I really love about Dorian is how uh, engaged he is. I'm often using his own personal time and uh, I think for him, I sense a, uh, I feel a sense of that it's personal um, for him. And he really, really has been amazing in just really connecting those personal relationships uh, with our kids and have uh, gone beyond that to, um, I feel like uh, hopefully keep those relationships alive uh, beyond high school. I would like to say also, uh, I agree, Jennifer Irving has been incredible, <laughs> an incredible partner um, for our program, but also uh, North Tech as a, um, as a whole. All right, thank you very much. Um, students, as Ms. Irvin and Mr. Hobbs are presenting, please feel free to type any questions you have into the chat feature, and we will answer your questions at the end of the presentation. Um, I think we're ready to get started. Ms. Irvin, would you like to share your screen? I sure will. Let me share my screen. Ooh. <clears throat> well, Sally, maybe you should do it after all. Okay. Okay. Just open up the PowerPoint because I'm not. <clears throat> okay. Okay. 
Okay, does everyone see that? All righty. So, okay. Good. All right, well, thank you for doing that. Um, again, thank you all for having us today. We're very excited to be able to talk with you today. Um, I have an outline of what we'll cover. I'm gonna briefly talk about our organization, BJC Healthcare. I have a video presentation that I'd like to share with you. Take a really quick look at some of the sample career exploration programs that we offer and can't wait to turn it over to my colleague from BJC Healthcare, Mr. Hobbs, who's going to share some additional information about opportunities because that's going to be our focus today, not only where we've been in the past, but where we look forward to going in the future and talking about opportunities that we have for you. So our next slide kind of gives you an overview of our hospital. So BJC Healthcare is made up of over 15 hospitals plus community health centers and private offices. And we have a total of over 30,000 employees. So when you think about an organization that big, over 30,000 employees, a healthcare organization, 30,000 employees, I would venture to say, if you think of a job that someone is doing and it amazes you and you get excited about it, I can venture to say there's someone within our organization within one of these many hospitals that is doing that job. Again, today we don't have a lot of time to talk about all of the jobs, but just wanna give you a snippet and show you a little bit about what happens within our organization. So I'm gonna start with a video that I'd like to share with you that kind of shows how you can get started from your high school and go straight into a career after tapping in into our tuition reimbursement. So go ahead and start the presentation. And this is actually one of our um, current employees. All right, so thank you for giving attention to that. Um, that is actually a video of one of our nurses that is employed at Christian Hospital. And she shared her story, which May so a lot of you may be able to relate to because I know you have a phenomenal CNA program there within your school and Kokisha actually took advantage of her high school CNA program. Right upon graduation, she was able to become employed at Christian Hospital. And from there, she took advantage of our tuition reimbursement to help pay her tuition as she worked to go ahead and become an RN. And she's still there at Christian Hospital today and is continuing to advance her career. I wanted to share that with you for two reasons. Number one, because you had a chance to kind of see our hospital, those of you that may not have had the opportunity to visit Christian Hospital, but also to see a real story, talking about a professional that came right out of high school and went right to work. And a lot of those opportunities do exist within our organization. So the slide I have in front of you now, I wanna talk to you about building that career um, because you're in a very unique, situation. When you think about the opportunities that you have at North and South Technical High School, the career pathways that you can take advantage of, partnering with us, BJC School Outreach and Youth Development, and our strong partnership that we have with our Human Resources Department, that helps us to really, really build our pipeline. So I'm going to go through and just tell you some of the things that we're already doing. And of course, we hope to expand this list. So first of all, we're very involved with the CNA programs within your school. Uh, we have students that come and that have come in the morning and afternoon to take advantage of our job shadowing, as well as to volunteer their time in the hospitals. Uh, with law enforcement, those students actually do phenomenal jobs at our Christian hospital in internships. And those students keep in contact and let us know how they're doing. Um, when you think about healthcare, most people think about a doctor, nurse, or some of the others I've mentioned, but Will you believe we have a facilities and engineering department? And within facilities and engineers, our professionals allow students that are in those pathways, whether it be construction, whether it be carpentry, whether it be any of the trades that you have there within your school to take advantage of, we allow those students to come to our medical center, do internships, to partner with the professionals that are working for BJC Healthcare to see what it is in real life. And also some of those students have become gainfully employed, again, right from high school. Because for us, those are what you call hard to fill areas. We love to work with students that come in with a skill set that we can just help them to develop and become a part of our organization. Same thing with pharmacy. Um, with your pharmacy program, uh, we've had several visits to our medical centers. The teacher had brought over students and some of you may have come yourself. If not, we hope to see you in the very, very near future. 
um, medical career externships, internships. Um, the EMT program has been very, very beneficial to our organization. Not only the fact that your EMT students come out and they know a lot and they're ready to hit the ground running, but also because we have that continuum at Christian Hospital, we offer the paramedic program that can help students go further. Um, Ms. Harrell introduced herself and talked about our Pre-Professional Health Science Academy. That is a phenomenal partnership. And we've gone into, I wanna say our sixth year of that uh, partnership. And I'm very happy to say that Ms. Harrell and I were there from the very oh beginning, structuring the program, able to make sure that it's one that students get the most benefits from. And so, as you can see, we are very, very interested and invested in your success as a student, and we really, really value the opportunity to work with you. Let's go ahead to the next slide. The next, when we talk about the slide with the career ladder, we went a little fast, but there was a slide that had a career ladder, and that's what we like to illustrate, the fact that you start in high school and you can work your way up that ladder at whatever pace is beneficial to you. Some students come like Kokisha you saw in the video and they wanna work as a CNA for a long period of time and slowly move up the ladder. Others come in and they wanna go right up the ladder. So it's up to you how far and fast you wanna go. Um, we're kicking off, we had to quickly shift the way we were partnering with schools. And so one of the things that we're doing and very excited to announce is that for this school year, you'll have an opportunity to take advantage of our virtual Explorers Post programs where we'll offer virtual exposure to careers. So we're doing a snippet today, but if you're interested, check in with any of your professional teachers that are on the, on the uh, video chat and they'll be able to share with you information about how to become a part of our Explorers Post because that way you'll have to do it on your own time. The time is four to five, but the early bird gets the worm. It gives you that opportunity to take more of those virtual tours and to see some of those hard to fill careers. Next slide. So as we think about hard careers, before I pivot over to Mr. Hobbs, I wanna ask the question and you can put the answer in the chat. Yeah, we're gonna use that chat. So when you think about careers in healthcare, I said there's more than a doctor, there's more than a nurse. Any guesses when I say the heartbeat of the hospital what comes to your mind? And I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. And then as your wheels are turning in your brain, I'm gonna go over, go ahead and pivot over to Mr. Hobbs to talk about an opportunity that you may or may not know about, but that will give you that opportunity to start and go up that career ladder within BJC. So go ahead, Dorian. All right, good afternoon. We can go to the next slide. The heartbeat of the hospital. Before I get started, I would like to piggyback on something that Mr. Hines said. Uh, I think one of the things that I really enjoy about dealing with uh, the kids that I've dealt with in North County Tech and some that I've seen in South County is that one of the differences that I've noticed that you guys have is that a lot of you know what you want to do. You have a direction, you have a, uh, a career path in mind. And just talking about my personal story, when I was a senior in high school, I had no clue what I wanted to be, where I wanted to go, or who I wanted to be. I just had no clue. And I find it so refreshing that when I talk with you guys that you already have an idea of what you wanted to do. And that's half the battle. And I commend you on that, that you have thought about where you wanna be and what you wanna do. Because I did not know, I had no clue where I wanted to go to college, I had no clue what degree I wanted, what profession I wanted. I was all over the map and I didn't have anyone to, to, to narrow it down for me, except for my basketball coach. But my basketball coach told me early on I wasn't gonna make pro. So I had to find another job because I was not gonna be a pro. So uh, I had to think about what I wanted to do and I didn't figure it out until after I graduated from college. I didn't figure out what I wanted to be until after I graduated from college. So I commend you guys on being uh, ahead of the game right here. This first slide, the heartbeat of the hospital. Thank you for, for uh, uh, teeing it up, uh, Jennifer. The heartbeat of the hospital, a lot of you are thinking, well, where is he going with this? What does that mean? What is the heartbeat of the hospital? And after I explain it, you're going to see. I'm going to talk about a position that a lot of you can get into at the beginning of your career, and you can work uh, to help pay for college and be what you want to be while we're paying for it. 
Harvey the hospital to me and to a lot of people is the central sterile processing department. And a lot of you guys are saying, what is that? Central sterile is the equipment and supplies that are used to uh, pr perform surgeries. These uh, equipments and supplies have to be sterile, clean and prepared, stored and ready for patient care. In the 1940s, these supplies were done mainly by the hospital or the department that was doing it. But there was a lot of duplication and a lot of, um, they weren't maintaining the high quality standards needed to be successful as a hospital. So they came up with a central sterile department. It means a number of, a number of variety of surgical procedures grew and a type of medical devices grew, uh, equipment and supplies became apparent that we needed a central sterile to maintain efficiency and economy for patient safety. That's how the central sterile department became. And you can go to the next slide, please. Okay, the central sterile responsible for following strict, oh, it's one slide, you went too far. Go, go back one, please. Back one. I'm missing one. Okay, don't worry about it. Don't you worry about it. Uh, is responsible, the central sterile department is responsible for following strict regulatory and manufacturing guidelines regarding decontamination, inspection, testing, and sterilization, packaging, and distributing of the surgical equipment. Uh, just to give you an example, when you have a surgery, all the equipments that the doctors are using, all the, the, the uh, uh, procedures, and uh, when they say scalpel, all those things have to be at the doctor's fingertips ready, and that's what the central sterile department does. They clean them, they put them together, and they make them ready for the doctor. Uh, the central, they're also, uh, they're also in charge of the life cycle of those equipment. So meaning after the equipment, after the surgery is done, then you have to do something with it. You have to clean them again and get them ready and put them in a particular order. And the reason that that's so important is that at the beginning of this pandemic, when we uh, had to furlough or people weren't coming to work or whatever, we had to stop doing some surgeries because we did not have enough uh, central sterile processing equipment ready for surgery. We didn't have enough people to do it. So that's why it's the heartbeat of the hospital. You, we cannot function as a hospital to perform surgeries without these equipments being sterilized and put in some sort of order and ready for the doctor to take care of. The equipment is, is sterilized in a uh, procedure and is transported to the operating room for processing. The instruments will begin in a decontamination room. Here the instruments will be soaked in a special solution to help remove blood and body tissue from it. It's also expected for any defects and to ensure that it works properly. It then goes to a special high pressure, pressure washer to get clean. Keep in mind, these things have to be very sterile and very clean in order to perform a surgery. Then after it is done, it is taken to a clean room and they're set up in trays in a package and process for the next step. The next step is a high processing machine called an autoclave where it receives a high heat steam bath. Instruments are then sensitive to heat, instruments that are sensitive to heat or moisturized or sterilized using ethylene oxidine that kills micro, microorganisms and other things that make it ready for the surgery. Quality assurance is done by the central sterile department by monitoring a special indicator that is placed with each central sterilization procedure. The department documents and tracks every outcome. Finally, the surgical set and tray is stored in a sterile room and it is inventoried into a tracking system. The instrument set and trays are requested for operating procedure where the surgical technology is used for the doctor doing the procedure. So what happens is after it's been sterilized and put aside, in the sterile room and waiting for it. So if there's a procedure, let's just say a tonsillectomy, a small procedure where they take out the tonsils, there's certain instruments that are used for that. So the central sterile department will put all those instruments together in a packet for the surgery. So when the doctor goes, and you've heard this on TV many a time, scalpel, that person who hands it to him, the central sterile, the heartbeat of the hospital, put that together. And so without that, we could not have the surgery. The central sterile, the sterile processing tech is, become, is really a healthcare professional. And so you learn certifications, you learn all about different procedures, different hospital things. And this could be a springboard to other 
uh, positions in the uh, uh, hospital. Uh, we've seen people who come in as central sterile and become primary care physicians, uh, technicians. We've seen people come in and become surgical technologists. We've seen people come in and become nurses. There's a lot of different avenues to go, but the reason why I wanted to share this particular position, because it's a good starting place. It's a good starting place where you can learn a lot of knowledge and you can do it as soon as you get out of high school. Now, there's a lot of different opportunities across the board. We have night shift, we have day shift, we have different hospitals, but it is a, a very good starting place. You can become a central sterile processing tech, become a surgical tech, become a, a manager, or even become a registered nurse. But it's just a great starting place for people. And I find this area to be very fascinating. Now, for me, it's a little scary for me because I have a little quirkiness about seeing a lot of blood. So you have to have a stronger stomach like than I do in order to get in this position. But is like I said, it is the heartbeat of the, of the hospital. You, you cannot perform a surgery without the central sterile department doing their job to the fullest and to the best of their ability. Uh, I think that's the last slide, but thank you guys for listening. It is a great, okay, life side of a sur surgical instrument. This is a great place for someone to get started and to take uh, the hospital or the medical profession seriously and become a medical professional. Any questions on this? Let me just interject while we kind of look through that. Uh, one of the things too, as you think about, I started out talking about all the opportunities and actually showed a slide of some of the points of engagements we've had with students. I want to say to you, don't be, be encouraged and know that you are right where you need to be. You are in one of the best, I'm going to say the best high school institutions in the United States because you have exposure to all of these programs. And so our contact information is there. You have access to our teachers. So please, please, please take advantage of the opportunities. Sign up for the Explorers post and you'll get to see a lot of the things. You'll see the blood and the guts, but then you also see the careers that don't require blood and guts. So did we get any questions? I know fingers, did we get questions? Any questions in the chat? All right, I guess you're still thinking, but again, just know that we are here for you. Um, BJC School Outreach and Youth Development has been around a long time and every opportunity we get to improve on what we're already doing, we seize those opportunities. We take advantage of the feedback that the students provide. And when I talk about the students coming over to shadow and the students coming over for field trips, we get evaluations. And if you say, I would have liked it better if, we try to do that if, if it's something within reason. So know that we are coming on you to help make us better. And we, again, we thank you for this opportunity. So I'm wondering if any of our panelists have any questions or any final thoughts to share. Any questions? I have one I like question. To, Go I ahead. Like one quick thing. As I was talking about, and I think one of the most important things about what we're talking about is, uh, like I said, when I was in high school, I had no clue what I wanted to do. But also, when I decided to go to college, I had no clue who was going to pay for college. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's more important than anything. you know. And I was fortunate enough to get a scholarship. But without that, I don't know if I would have been able to go to college. And so we're talking about an opportunity in BJC. And it doesn't have to be Central Sterile. I'm, I'm partial to Central Sterile. But it could be a lot of different avenues. The key is, if someone's going to pay you to go to college, or you're gonna have a way for your college to be paid for, and especially if you wanna get in the medical field, yeah. take advantage of it. There's nothing wrong with starting somewhere else, starting here and working somewhere else. I took a group of, I took a guy with me to give a talk at the Urban League, and he is a nursing manager, but he started as a housekeeper. He started as a housekeeper and BJC paid for his be his bachelor's and his master's degree to become a nursing manager. So he started as a housekeeper. So we're talking about opportunities mm -hmm. and it's not so much where you start, but it's where you end up and how you get to that point. And I think the, the programs that BJC has are fabulous and uh, just getting in and having someone pay for your tuition. That's all I, I can't stress that enough. Mm -hmm. Paying for tuition is without a doubt, one of the best things that can happen. So thank you guys for giving me this time and I hope to see you again.
It's very helpful, Mr. Hobbs. Thank you. I want to thank Ms. Irvin and Mr. Hobbs for joining us today. Um, I want to thank all of our special school district personnel who joined us as well and all of the students who participated. Okay, well, this concludes our BJC Tech Tuesday. Join us again next week at 4.30.